Hello, Namaskar and welcome. Network analysis per chart, per ten CPM, whatever the name you want to give it. We have already discussed the concepts of early start and early finish by forward pass method in the earlier lecture. Now, in this lecture, we are going to discuss about latest start time, latest finish time by the backward pass method backward pass method that means from finish to start yes from finish to start yes determination of latest start time and latest finish time will go from finish of the project to the start of the project yes now on the basis of the previous lecture we know that the latest finish time or rather earliest finish time of the project is 22 that itself will be taken as the latest finish time of the project and there are two end activities and for both the end activities we should take the latest finish time which is the earliest finish time itself 22 now Latest start time equals to latest finish time minus duration. So for J it will be 22 minus 5, 17. 17 becomes the latest start time. Latest by the 17th day we must start J. This is the interpretation. Here it will be 22 minus 6, 16. Yes. This is the latest allowable start time for activity K. That means instead of starting K on 15th day, even if we start K on 16th day, we can complete the project in 22 days. Yes, we have flexibility available of one day. Now, the meaning of this kind of flexibility we are going to discuss in the next few lectures slacks and floats yes okay now uh, from j j is the successor of two activities f and h j is a latest start time will become the latest finish time of the predecessors so for h as well as f this 17 the latest start of J becomes the latest finish time of F H L S H. Yes. See, these two have only one successor, so still there is no confusion. Okay, the latest start time of the successor becomes the latest finish time of the predecessor or predecessors. Okay, latest start time equals to latest finish time minus duration 17 minus 6, it will be 11. Latest start time of H, 17 minus 10, 7 will be the latest start time of F. See, no movement in earliest start and latest start is possible in these two cases. Yes, that is very important point, but we shall discuss it later. Now, in case of H, there is only one predecessor C. In case of C, the latest finish will be 11. That is the latest start of the successor. And 11 minus 8, 3 will be the latest start time for C. Okay, now... In this case, we cannot directly go to B because B has three successors. We shall have to compare the latest start time of all the three successors and we need to select the smallest one. Okay. But from K, we can go to I as well as G because G has only one successor, I has only one successor. If there is only one successor, there is no need of comparison. So, in case of I, the latest finish time will be 16. That is the latest start time of its successor K. 
16 and 16 minus 2 14 will be the latest allowable start time in case of G also the latest start time of successor K becomes the latest finish time and 16 minus duration 4 12 will become the latest allowable start time of G that means instead of G instead of starting G on 7th day we can start it on 12th day or in between on any day ok now see I has two predecessors D and E but D and E both have only one successor so there is no confusion I's latest start time 14 will become the latest finish time of D as well as E 14 please be careful somewhat confusing yes again if there is single successor there is no complexity or matter of confusion in determining the latest finish time because if any activity has only one successor the latest start time of the successor becomes the latest finish time of the activity in both this case it will be 14 14 minus duration 3 so it will be 11 latest allowable start time for D will be 11 similarly 14 minus 6 8 will be the latest allowable start time for E now let's take first of all the easier part A has only one successor D so D's latest start time will become the latest finish time of A that is 11 11 minus 2 that is 9 becomes the latest allowable start time of A but in case of B there are three successor activities first of all take the latest start time of all successor activities it is 7 8 12 compare them and select whichever is smaller 7 8 12 whichever is smaller that means 7 whichever is smaller becomes the latest finish time of the predecessor activity 7 minus 7 earliest start time oh sorry latest start time of B comes to 0 and latest finish time of B comes to 7 how can we determine this 7 take the earliest start time of all the three successor activities of B compare them and select whichever is lower yes ok what is the thing latest finish time for an activity is the smallest of the latest start times of all the successor activities that means compare the latest start times of all the successor activities and select whichever is low so now in this way we can determine the latest start time as well as latest finish time of all the activities by following the backward pass method the interesting thing is in some of the activities ES, EF and LS, LF are not same but in few in case of few activities LS, ES, LF, EF are same yes see in this theory case B, F and J they are same what is its interpretation? B, F and J The activities which earliest start time and latest start time are equal as well as earliest finish time and earliest latest finish time are also equal are the critical activities that means B, F and J are the critical activities in case of this project and the path of critical activities is the critical path yes critical path is B F J or 1 3 6 8 if we refer to the activity or node numbers this is another method of determining the critical path in earlier lectures 
we learned to determine the critical path by comparing the total duration of completing the project through the various paths. But another method of determining the critical path is to compare early start and late start times. Both should be equal and earliest finish time and latest finish time both should also be equal. If these two and these two are equal, the activity becomes critical activity. There are three critical activities B, F and J. So in this way, we can determine the critical path. Okay, thank you.